this video, we will start um, discussing stabilization exercises for the cervical flexors with progression. And it's very important to understand the importance of stabilization exercises before uh, progressing to uh, strengthening exercises. Uh, the first step uh, would be uh, to uh, explain to the performer the neutral position of the cervical uh, spine. Uh, and usually, we will uh, tell the performer that if I'm, yeah, as if as if there is something, as if there is a rope that is pulling you uh, from above your head. So you need to flatten the cervical uh, spine and apply similar length to the cervical flexion. And of course, you will be doing the tucking shun in. So the movement will be like this. Relax. Because usually people would have like forward head. So when they imagine there is something pulling up uh, from uh, above your head, you would do like this. So flattening of the cervical spine and applying the simulatic uh, movement. And usually you will try to repeat this uh, movement to make sure that the performer understands the instruction and the task. So whenever I see neutral position, you will commit to this position. Okay? Now, uh, you can relax now. It's very important also uh, during the stabilization uh, exercises uh, to understand two key factors that we need to play in order to progress the exercise. One of them uh, we call the uh, support, the level of support, and the other factor is the protection phase. So the level of support we can be determined by uh, selecting the starting position. And usually we will start uh, from the maximum uh, support level, which is from supine. Okay, and then if the uh, performer is able to do everything from supine with all the progressions, then we can move to uh, another uh, less supportive uh, level. For example, we can move into from supine into sitting, sitting on a medicine ball, then uh, standing, standing on a wall, or standing on a uh, wobble board for the uh, least support level. Okay, so this is key factor number one, which is the support level. And then we have the protection phase. The protection phase will be determined by asking the performer to, uh, uh, you can relax now, uh, to apply different uh, arm movements, and we call this the limb loading. So the limb loading will determine the uh, protection phase, and usually we will start with the maximum protection phase. We call it the maximum to moderate protection phase. Then we have the moderate to minimum, and uh, lastly, we have the minimum protection to no protection phase. So basically, you need to keep in mind the starting position that you will start with, uh, which will determine the level of support. And as I said before, we will start with the supine. And then you also need to think about the protection phase uh, that uh, can be determined by the uh, limb loading, the uh, uh, placement, and the movement of the arms. Okay. Now, uh, another thing, we uh, will start with uh, performing the neutral position uh, for, we will hold for 10 seconds and we need to repeat for 10 times, okay? So 10 times 10, 10 times 10, uh, 10 seconds hold and 10 repetitions, okay? You can relax. So you need to count for 10, simply ask the performer to count for 10 or in your, uh, uh, use the timer. Uh, to determine the 10 seconds. Uh, whenever he's able to do that, we will start now the limb loading. Okay, so we are still in the maximum uh, level of support, which is supine, but we will start now adding our movement. We will start first uh, by asking him to bring both arms into flexion, but before that, all the movements that will be done, he needs to perform the neutral position uh, during doing that movement. So, neutral position. Okay, and both arms now into shoulder flexion. So yes, raise your arm 90 degrees, and then go back again. So the idea is that he's performing the movement while keeping the uh, cervical tucked in, uh, and then hold for 10 seconds and repeat again 10 times. Everything you will do it 10, 10 times, then, and then. Uh, we will move, as I said before, the limb loading will determine the uh, protection phase. So after the uh, shoulder flexion, bilateral shoulder flexion to 90 degrees, we will 
try shoulder abduction to 90 degrees. Again, different position. Hold back to the Try not to slide the uh, arms. Yes. Okay. And he is, as you can see, he's uh, actively engaging the uh, deep muscles of the cervical region. You can relax now. Okay. Again, this needs to be repeated uh, 10 times. And uh, again, we are progressing with the limb coding. We are still in the uh, maximum support level, which is a front supine, but we are staying with the limb coding. And uh, now, with your both arms at the side, just rotate both arms into extended rotation. So, maintain the neutral position. Both arms rotated, extended rotated, and again, hold for 10 seconds. And when he is done, we need to repeat this 10 times. Okay, you can relax now. And now, as I said, we are progressing with the limb loading. And we will do again uh, bilateral for the reflection. So, you need to raise both arms, but now with the full range. So, over the head, just neutral position, low, and maintain and hold for 10 seconds. Uh, and when he is done with that, we need to repeat the same movement again. You can relax now. Now we will add another progression. Uh, we, we did uh, already before the shoulder abduction to 90 degrees. Now we will do it to the full range of motion. So, um, neutral position, the side, and don't forget to extend the rotate. So, when he is, you can, you can repeat it now just to show the extended position. So, when the performer reaches the uh, 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, don't forget to remind him to extend and rotate and continue. Yes, and hold for uh, 10 seconds to actively engage the and feel breathing, of course, don't hold your breath. Yes, and then relax. Okay, uh, all the movements that we have done so far uh, in the anatomy can be planes, and we can also change the uh, limb loading by changing the planes. Now we can play with the planes as well. So we will ask him to do diagonal patterns. Okay, so start, yes. So we, now we are targeting diagonal patterns as well. So he's elevating both arms bilaterally while holding the neutral position, uh, holding 10 seconds and then repeating again and again 10, 10 times. And when he is done, you can relax now. We can add other functional movements that involve, for example, uh, resistance, uh, pushing and pulling activities. Uh, so we will give example for the uh, added resistance, external weight. And of course, you can, it's not the aim of the exercise to use very heavy weights, so you can go with light weights. Uh, that matches the ability of the performer, and the idea is just to progress the limb loading. So he can uh, uh, three kilo gram dumbbells, and now he can perform the uh, shoulder flexion, for example, using the uh, loads. And as you can see, he's actively engaging the deep muscles by assuming the neutral position and hold it for 10 seconds and when he's done, he will back, go back to the uh, starting position. You can relax now and repeat again. Uh, give you an example. We can also uh, give another example using pulling and uh, pushing the activities. I will start with the uh, pushing. So he needs to uh, maintain the usual position of the cervical spine. Uh, and you can simply uh, use a stack. Now you can, I will uh, push the, uh, I will try to pull upward and he will push the, let's push. I'm pushing the stick as he also pushing uh, the stick as well. Okay, relax. And we can uh, use the pulling activity using, this is an, an elastic tube, so we can also use elastic resistance. So he's fixating the tube underneath and we go for a shoulder flexion while maintaining the neutral position of the cervical spine. And you can also, you can relax now after holding 10 seconds, and you can also add the different exercises uh, to uh, mimic the functional activities. As, as you uh, have seen so far, uh, we have added different exercises within the limb loading. 
and with even the performer is confident while doing the exercises and the exercises are applied smoothly with the maximum repetitions then you can move to the other challenge and when you think that he is doing all the exercises comfortably within this position then you need to change the starting position uh, by changing the level of support so you will move from supine uh, to sitting, then to standing, and then you can repeat all the tasks that we have done so far.